Hey everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and I have been a high school English teacher for almost 25 years. I am now serving as a district TOSA supporting middle school and high school English teachers. I wanted to create this virtual space to share strategies, resources, and survival tips. It has been, it has been challenging. These past two years, many teachers are feeling overwhelmed, tired, and in many cases, isolated. Our students are coming in with more needs, many of them suffering from anxiety, others not able to communicate the way they are feeling or knowing how to engage with the material that they have in front of them. That is why we need to come together to find innovative ways to reach our students. So thank you for being here. Our topic for today is going to be classroom management in this new era. Let's jump in. So strategy number one that's very important is taking care of yourself. As we have seen in the past year with COVID and this health crisis is that we have to be adamant about our boundaries, especially as teachers, we constantly feel that we are giving it our all because we're passionate about our students and their lives. But we also have to take care of ourselves. As we all know, if we are feeling stressed and overwhelmed and we bring that into the classroom, our students can feel that. We need to eat well, we need to exercise, and we need to find other teachers that will help and support us. Working in isolation, as you know, is not healthy. It wasn't healthy for our students and it's not healthy for us. So knock on that neighbor's door, find out if they need a Starbucks, uh, come out of your rooms and interact with others. Share those frustrations, but make sure you don't go into the negative toxic zones. It's important to talk about what is going on and find out what are new ways and different ways that teachers are dealing with our students. Very important because our students, again, are receptacles. If we come in frantic, stressed out, then that gives them license to also act in that way. And so it is very important to find balance in our life. So yes, sometimes we do need to say, no, I can't be part of that committee. Sometimes I need to say, no, I can't stay that late today, right? Because again, there will be times where you will have to be needed and you need to have the energy to be able to do all the wonderful things that you do. Remember, teaching is a marathon. It is for the long haul. So we need to take a deep breath and rely on those colleagues and partners, right? And, and take care of ourselves. So that's definitely strategy number one. Strategy number two, know your students. I love this graphic. And I'm gonna go, we're gonna take some time here to really go through each of these uh, areas here. So let's start with this one. Number one, Generation Z. So I'm really looking at our 13 year olds through our 18 year olds. Generation Z, as you can see here, are social. It says that they spend 7.6 hours per day socializing with friends and family. So even though they might be sitting there in your classroom, their head is down, their hoodies on, right? They actually spend quite a bit texting, Snapchatting, uh, interacting. When they're on their video games, they have their headset on. They're constantly communicating. However, sometimes in our classrooms, we're not giving them that space to communicate. So again, you know, all of these, it's not for all students, but we want to keep in mind what many students might be doing and feeling. Number two, they're multitaskers. Gen Z prefers to work on multiple tasks at the same time. On average, Gen Z will work off of five screens at once. I counted about three. Uh, I have teenagers myself. I have a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, and a young college student. And they don't watch TV the way we used to. They don't sit through a whole movie without checking on their phone, checking on their friends. Uh, sometimes I see my own kids with the laptop, the TV on with some YouTube music video, and their cell phone right next to them. So they're constantly multitasking. I know we might see that as a negative, but we want to understand what their world is comprised of, right? So they need to keep things moving. Number three, entrepreneurs. Gen Z desires independent work environments where they have some choices. 72% of, of teens want to start their own business someday. 
In fact, our young children, some of them already have their own YouTube channel. They're making videos, right? They're marketing themselves. They are selling, again, sometimes on different apps such as OfferUp, right? They're making things, whether it's makeup that they're creating, right? Or a nail designs or hair designs or earrings, fashion. Our children now live in a much bigger world. And we need to educate them on the safe ways to do that. Educated. Gen Z is constantly learning. I know you might be thinking, what? They don't even do their homework. But they're learning things that are interesting to them. They will go down this rabbit hole researching a topic that they might have seen on TikTok or on YouTube. Our children are more exposed to different types of food and languages and cultures, and they're curious beings. So let's tap into that. Number five, philanthropists. Gen Z wants to do good in the world. 93% say that an organization's impact on society affects their decision to work there and to buy there. Many students are aware of which organizations, which businesses support and don't support certain social aspects of our, our society. And so are we giving them a place for them to, to meet those needs? If they want to help the world, do we have clubs and associations and volunteer opportunities for that? Let's keep going. Number six, this generation are digital natives. Gen Z are the first true natives to the digital era. This generation spends 15.4 hours per week, I think it's more, on their smartphones. So they can create a cool, engaging video in less than three minutes, if given the chance, right? So again, our students, they're the new technologies. They're the, the IT sitting in our classrooms. But are we asking them to share those talents? Interactive. Gen Z likes to interact with people. 34% uh, are most concerned with boosting their people management skills. So they want to be influencers. They want to be able to, like I said, market themselves, market their business. Do they know how to take on different types of people? Tech savvy. Have a question? Google it. 66% said that technology makes them feel that anything is possible. And they do. They're out there cooking. They're out there making things right? Um, and they kind of see themselves as unequals to adults. If not, sometimes they get a little egotistical and think they're that a little bit better than us, right? Because they know, they know what's going on in this internet world. Yes, one of the issues is that they are less focused. Gen Z tends to needs continuous updates and stimulation. It's no surprise that this generation has an attention span of eight seconds. So if you are a typical a teacher that likes to typically use lecture style where students are just taking notes on paper are students just doing the work rather than really engaging with it are they really learning the material right i always tell my students i don't need you to be a xerox machine i don't need you to copy every word on my powerpoint or every word that i say i need you to process that i need you to make it your own and so again let's Think about ways to keep them moving, engaged. I don't want to do one activity the entire time. Because again, my class might be quiet, but that's a classroom management issue because they are not fully engaged. Finally, cautious. As a result of growing up during the Great Recession, Gen Z tends to be more careful, careful with their expenses. 57% would rather save their money than spend it. And we are seeing this in their hesitancy to go to college. Many students are thinking that college is not an option because they do not want to get a school loan. And so many of our students are being persuaded by what they're seeing on the internet, including YouTube and TikTok, and are not getting balanced information. And so it is very important that us as educators understand who our audience is. So I ask you, who's sitting in your classroom? Do you know what they like? Do you know the type of music they're listening to? Do you know what they're reading? Do you know their hobbies, right? Give them a space to share that and you'll see those classroom management issues decrease. All right, next slide. So we want to make 
the work that they're doing engaging and relevant. I love all these new tech tools. So some of those tech tools include Padlet, Kahoot, Quizzes, Flipgrid, Adobe Spark, so many new tools that were introduced to us during the pandemic. Keep using them. They are, again, our kids love that technology. Now I'm not saying do it all the time in the entire period. They definitely need a break from the technology, but know, you know, when to put it in and when to, again, you know, disengage from the computer and just have good old, you know, teaching fun, right? Get them moving around gallery walks and Socratic seminars and four corners. Variety, again, keeps your class engaged in the material that they're doing. All right. In fact, this is, you're going to find this choice board that I created on the description. And so here are just a number of things that I have used throughout the years to help me make sure that I don't have issues with my students. So one of the things I definitely always have ready is some social contracts that I'm going to have with my students in my classes. I love greeting my students at the door. And so I put a list of academic words posted or I give a list to each student and then when they walk in and fist pump or say hello to me, they tell me what mood they are in, but they have to use an academic word. And it, I can gauge where my students are at, if they're all stressed out and so forth, so I can adjust my speed of my class. I teach them how I want them to talk in my class. I don't just expect them to be able to use that formal language or more, as we say, respectable language in my class. I, I want to show them what it sounds like. So again, I have a lot of links here that you can use. Uh, this here is all the different engaging uh activities that I do in my class and I just have to say how much I love doing Pear Deck. Uh, again, it gives me instant feedback of how my students are doing. Again, so many different choices. Also, I, I have classroom jobs for all my students. Uh, all my students have to contribute to the class somehow. In fact, I have a class president for each class. I have VPs. They run the beginning of my class. I'm not the one standing at the front saying, the rules and the agenda and the objective, my students are. And not only do they do that, they also share a joke of the day or riddle of the day. Talk about changing the atmosphere in that classroom because now they feel like they're part of their learning. What about your English learners? Some of your students might be behaving um, in a way that you don't want them to because they don't understand what they are doing. Are you making sure their learning is accessible? So. You know, I understand sometimes we don't want them to have their cell phones out, but very careful. Let's make sure that we're not taking away a tool that's going to help them understand the material. And what I mean is they need their cell phone or they need a laptop that's going to help them translate some of that material, especially if you have students that are non-English speakers. So here are some links that will help you. Immersive Reader, again, our Microsoft Translator, all of these great tools to help you communicate with your students. Finally, another tip, actually tip number four, strategy number four, is be ready for all those possible emergencies, right? So I always say, have a system in place. I have my one-on-one -on -one contracts that I will share also. My students know, oh, Ms. Garcia is going to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. Hey, what's going on today? You seem a little out of it. Everything okay? Always start there. Have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your students. If you're not building that rapport, they're going to be, uh, again, a thorn on your side the entire year. So you got to win them over. Find a way. So I do have these contracts. I make deals with them. Hey, kid, you know, if you get this done, this is what's going to happen. I have those contact information, right? Make sure, you know, you know about their home life and their home situation. Have a teacher buddy system. I rarely send students to the office. Um, it was like giving them a, a reward for whatever negative behavior they were having, right? So they're causing some disruption and I send them to the office. Uh, they're probably going to sit there with other kids who are causing disruptions. And now that you have a whole party going on uh, in the office, I'm not going to do that. In fact, they get to stay longer in my classroom if they want my attention. I say, I have no problem. I'll stay in and work with you during your lunchtime, right? have a buddy system where maybe they need a little time out and remove them from uh, their audience. And I always had a teacher who was there, yeah, send them over, right? With work, of course. Find leverage for each kid. 
all kids want something, right? So I would find out, oh, that kid is on the football team. I'm going to give their coach a little call, right? Or, hey, they really enjoy hanging out with, you know, this group of students. You know what? I'm going to have them come in during lunchtime. They're going to hang in here and we're going to have a little study session. Or, hey, you know, they're part of that after school club. Uh, I'm going to talk to that advisor. So what is it that these kids, your students like and want and, and be able to meet them there, right? So again, that's strategy number four. Have a system in place so nothing catches you off guard. Try to avoid kicking kids out of class, um, sending them away, because that sends the message that you're not really in control, right? And, and I really don't even like that word, but, you know, you lose some of that, that sense of, of authority within your class. Uh, finally, stay calm. And that goes back to that self-care. If you're frantic when you walk in, if you're walking in late to your class because, you know, there was a lot of traffic, we get that. However, take a deep breath you are setting the tone in your class. You can't expect kids to stay calm when they're stressed out if you don't show that yourself. When that kid snaps at you because they had a bad situation at home and they might have used some inappropriate language, stay calm. You're the adult. Show them what it's like to have these stressors come at you and you're still going to stay in that calm zone. Uh, I always remember a, a PD that I went to about classroom management, and they said, think ice. You're cold and cool and collected. And I don't mean cold as in cold-hearted. I just mean, oh, kid, I got to get through this agenda. There's nothing you're going to do to stop me from getting this information to you because it is important. So if those kids are making those sounds in the back and they're, or their phone is going off because they're trying to, you know, take you off your zone, calmly, quietly, walk on over, lean on over, and have that conversation. Hey, kid, I need you to turn that phone off, right? And, you know, I don't want to have to take this phone away, so I'm going to ask you to put it away, right? And I have to do this again. I'm going to have to take it away, right? Calm. Most, if not all of the time, my kids comply because they found my classes fun. I was real with them. I was authentic. I never, again was sarcastic. I never made them feel bad. They were part of the class. So again, these are some tips that I have for you. I hope that you have a wonderful school year. This is only part one. In the next video, I'll be sharing some of those tools that I use to keep my students engaged in the lessons that I am giving. Hopefully that helped. And I hope, like I said, you have a great year. Thank you.